How many of you gearing up for a big Thanksgiving weekend? Anybody? Yeah. Amen. Well, I'm gonna be praying for you this week. I pray that you have a, a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, that's just around the corner. And I'm praying that God would uh, give you a time of rest during this time, that you wouldn't eat too much. Don't follow my example, okay? But uh, no, I pray that uh, it'll be a great time with you and your family and, and a time of rest. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a great uh, time of the year when we can gather with our family. And uh, I tell you, I know school's already out and some people are already starting to take that time away this week. And but I tell you, what a great crowd that's here this morning despite that, and it's good to see you here this morning and excited about everything that we're going to be talking about here today. We're wrapping up our series that we've been walking through for the last eight weeks called Missio Day, which means the mission of God, and I don't know about you, but for me personally, it's been a really good series to just walk through and to be reminded of God's incredible truths that he is teaching us uh, about his mission and about who we are, and so I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about this wrap-up here this morning. Uh, before we dive into God's Word, though, I do want to mention this morning, just say a big uh, thank you, we collected 612 of the Operation Christmas Child boxes, and so those will be going out, amen, and thank you for that. Uh, 612 children will receive uh, not only a, a Christmas gift this, this Christmas, but also they will be hearing the gospel, maybe many of those for the first time. And so I'm just thankful that we can impact people that we don't even know, people across the world from us uh, with the gospel. And, uh, and, and so what a wonderful ministry. I also want to say that this Thanksgiving, there will be 135 families that receive Thanksgiving dinner from Cross Point Church as well. Amen. <laughs> And so uh, I'm, I'm very excited about the, the opportunity we have to just to deliver those to people who are very much in need, and, and so I'm very thankful uh, for that reality. So uh, before we dive into God's Word, I want to pray this morning, and then we're going to open up God's Word and, and, uh, and walk through this last message of this series. So pray with me, if you will. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, Lord, we do thank you for this day, and we thank you, God, for just the incredible work that you're doing in this place. And Lord, the, the reality that lives are changed. And, and Father, we can recognize your presence among us. We can recognize your spirit moving in such remarkable ways that people uh, offer testimony to your goodness and your greatness in their life. And Father, we just thank you for uh, this time of the year where we offer thanksgiving in, in so many different ways. Father, I pray that today, God, this would be a day where we just really uh, focus in on the things that we are thankful for as we enter into a season, that time of the year when we are reminded of the need to give thanks. And so, Father, I pray that today would be uh, sort of a prelude to everything that's to come this week. May, may this week you be glorified through our thanksgiving. God, may you be glorified and made much of as we think about all the things that we are grateful for and thankful for as a result of your presence in our life. And so, Father, we love you and we thank you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to invite you this morning to turn with me to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to be looking this morning at verses 10 through 15. And the message this morning we're going to be talking about is having a heart of thankfulness. Having a heart of thankfulness. Now, if I were to ask you this morning, how many of you are thankful for all the things that God has done in your life? You know, there's no doubt you would be very thankful. You're probably gathered in this room because you're thankful for who God is and what he's accomplished in your life. And you've gathered in this room to worship Jesus in spirit and in truth. And there's just so many things. I can list you just hundreds and hundreds of things that I am so thankful for as I think about all that God has done in my life. And so uh, that's, that's something that I think is, is very important for us to rec uh, recognize in our life. But you may or may not know this. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but thankfulness is a prominent theme throughout the scriptures. Thankfulness is a prominent theme throughout the Bible, and as we read through the Bible, uh, we begin to see the spirit of thankfulness spring up from 
place to place. We, we go in the Psalms, and in the Psalms, you'll find a lot of, uh, a lot of the thankfulness uh, sort of permeating in that great uh, a, a collection of, of songs. And we, we see this, that the, 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 the believers and the followers of God believe truly in and, and, and being thankful for who God is. As we move into the New Testament, we begin to see over and over and over this theme of thankfulness, especially in the Apostle Paul's writings. We see just looking at how many times he specifically says, thanks be to God or be thankful to God is, is approaching nearly a hundred different times in all of his writings and his letters. And so it's really remarkable to to see this theme scattered all throughout Scripture, but so often in our own life, if we're not careful, we find ourselves just sort of being less content with life and not being thankful for who God is or what he has accomplished in our life. And so this morning we're going to be talking about having this heart of thankfulness. And basically when we look at the Scriptures and we begin to process this, we begin to realize that there are two basic reasons why we should be very thankful for God in our life. One is God's faithfulness. How many of you would concur with me this morning that God is faithful in your life? Amen? God is faithful. Amen? And so just knowing that he is faithful, and there's so many things about God that he is faithful about. He is faithful to love us, maybe even when we don't feel a lot of love for him. Amen? That he is faithful to, to be good to us when when, when we are in need of, of his goodness. He is faithful to be kind and to restore. And there's just so much that, that he is faithful to do. Uh, another basic reason for, for just being thankful to God is, is because of God's provision. God is a, a God who provides uh, the needs for his people. Amen. And so we begin to realize as we search through the scripture that not only financially, but many other ways, God is a provider to his people. And so we see this over and over and over. And when these two things are talked about in scripture, we also see accompanying that, uh, those two things, uh, this heart of thankfulness toward who God is and what he has done in God's people's lives. And so this morning in the passage that we're looking at, Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. He's writing to this church in Corinth. And Corinth was a very interesting city. It's a very fascinating city. In the ancient world, it was one of the very few cities that were blessed uh, in, in the way that it was. It was a very wealthy city. It, it, had, uh, it, it prospered financially. And there was a couple of things that contributed to that, but geographically was one of those things. The city was favorably located between the north and the south regions of Greece, and so the trade routes passed right through Corinth, and so Corinth was known as a, as a tradesman paradise. It was a place where, where uh, a lot of goods changed hands in Corinth, and because of that, the city benefited from that. But uh, also, one of the things that we know about uh, the, the, Corinthian, uh, the Corinthian people there in the city of Corinth was it was well known for its brass and its pottery. Uh, in fact, all over the Roman world, the, the Corinthian brass and pottery was well sought after. It was, a, it was almost uh, something that would be considered world famous. And so, uh, not only were they trading goods, but they were also manufacturing goods. And so, because of this, the city was a very wealthy city. It was a, it was a city that was, was really blessed in, in a huge way. Now, as we are getting into this letter, obviously we're skipping ahead to, to chapter 9, and I want to just give you a little bit of background here of what's happening. By the time we get to chapter 8, the Apostle Paul, as he is writing, he, he, he writes and he acknowledges their abundance in wealth, and he talks about the need for them to be generous people, because you're wealthy, because God has blessed you, because God has, has financially blessed you, he talks a little bit about their need to be generous. And by the time we get to chapter 9, in the first verse through the ninth, we begin to see where Paul addresses what 
he calls the cheerful giver. He, he talks about the need to be a cheerful giver, to give out of not just your abundance and, and to give in a, in a sort of spirit of, of just dutiful obedience, but rather to give because you want to give. And so this is something that, that Jordan just mentioned just a few moments ago as he was praying for our offering. Our giving, our generosity should, be from a, should flow from a heart of thankfulness and a heart of just willingness, not one where we have to, you know, sort of be talked into giving. He also addresses this truth in Scripture that you will reap what you sow. And so all of this has sort of happened just before verse 10 of chapter 9. And this is where we're going to pick up here this morning because in verse 10, Paul reveals something that is truly interesting for us to think about. What Paul's going to reveal is this truth. That God's provision produces thankful hearts. God's provision produces thankful hearts. Now, keeping in the context, he is no doubt talking about financial provision. But we also know that in all that God gives us, all the, the blessings that he bestows upon the believer should also generate a spirit of thankfulness. And so we're going to be looking at that this morning. So read with me, if you will, starting in chapter 9 of 2 Corinthians and verse 10. We're going to read this together here this morning. So Paul writes these words. He says, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. He says, you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission flowing from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of of your contribution for them and for all others. While they were long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you. And then he says these words in verse 15. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. I love that. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. And we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Now, here's the thing. The Bible is, is filled with these, these instructions for us to give thanks to God. The Bible, as we go through the scriptures, we begin to recognize that the Bible speaks of this, this need to be thankful for God, to give thanksgiving to God all through the scripture. And most of the verses that we find in scripture tell us the reasons why we should be thankful to God. In fact, many times giving thanks to God and praising him are combined in the same verse. And so we see as we read through the scriptures where where the scriptures tell us, be thankful for God and here's why you should be thankful. Over and over and over we begin to see this. And in addition, we are also taught through scripture that we cannot adequately worship God without giving thanks to God. And I want you to think about that for just a moment. We gather in this room, and most of us in this room, we, we, we begin to think about worship as being those moments in our life where we lift up our voices in song, and, and we offer what to God? We offer praise and adoration. Well, what is praise directly tied to? It's being thankful for God and all that he is and all that he does. And so when we come into this place and we begin to worship, even though it may just feel as though we're, our hearts are stirred in music, the reality is we cannot properly worship God. We cannot adequately worship God if thanksgiving or thankfulness is not at the very core of what we're singing about. And so here we gather here and we we thank God, we worship God, we praise God, we lift God high, we make much of God, and we make much of him because we are thankful people. And so here we see this sort of flowing out of here as we think about. And here what Paul does is he begins to directly credit God's financial provision 
as producing thanksgiving. He says the word thankfulness or thanks be three times in this one passage here as we read through this. In verse 11, he says this. He says, you will be enriched in every way. He talks about in, in verse, 11, uh, verse 11, in every way, being generous in every way. And so he says, you will be enriched in every way. And then at the end, he says, and it will produce thanksgiving to God. And so he says, God is blessing you beyond, uh, uh, beyond measure. He is blessing you. Maybe you don't recognize those blessings, but he is blessing you. And he is blessing you in a way so that you can be generous. But he says this. He says, he is blessing you that you would be also thankful to God for the blessings in your life. He goes on in verse 12 and he says, for the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. I just love that phrase, overflowing with thanksgiving to God. I love that because oftentimes we go through life and it feels as though we just sort of take life for granted. Have you ever just found yourself in that place where, you know, as you go through life, you just seem to take everything for granted. You don't stop for a moment and just think about all the things that you might be thankful for. This morning when I left the house, I, I pulled out and I was driving to the church and I got about a, about a 20 minute drive, 15, 20 minute drive, something like that. And so as I'm driving in, I started praying, which is a, a typical thing for me to do. I don't listen to the radio a lot. I just typically when I'm driving from one place to the other, I may spend some time with the Lord, pray, that sort of thing. And so this morning was no different. I'm driving in and I'm praying and this morning, knowing that I was going to talk about thanksgiving, I just thought, well, I'm just going to give thanks to God. I'm just going to thank him for everything that I can think of, figuring that I could just sort of transition my prayer into other things. But I drove the entire way this morning thanking God for just so many hundreds of things that I should be thankful for, beginning with who he is. How many of you are thankful for who God is this morning? Amen. I'm thankful for who he is, not just what he's done for me, but who he is. His existence is something that I am thankful for. His presence is something I am thankful for. His ability to, to do all things is something I am thankful for. The, the reality that he is all powerful, that he is all knowing these things I am thankful for because I'm not, and I'm so thankful that he is, amen? And so I'm thankful for who he is, but I'm also thankful for what he's done. I'm thankful for my own salvation and my own sanctification. I'm thankful that, that for the children he's given me and the grandchildren he's given me and the fact that God is working in the lives of even those small children. And I'm just so thankful for that. And I'm thankful for you and I'm thankful for what God's doing in your life. And I just, I could go on and on and on and on as well as you could about how good God is. Amen? He is so good. He is so good. So often I hear people say all the time, well, Pastor David, if you knew what was going on in my life, you just wouldn't know what to be thankful for. Well, let me just say to you this morning, just start with who he is. Just start with who he is. And you know what's really remarkable about starting with who he is? Is he'll begin to reveal all the things that you should be thankful for. You could spend the rest of the afternoon giving thanks to God. And so Paul here, he, he lays this out for us. He, 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 he says, and then, and then in verse 15, he says, he says in, in 12, the overflowing and many thanksgivings to God. And then in verse 15, he says this. Listen to this. He says, thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. Now, before we dive into verse 15, I, wanna, I actually want to close with this in just a, a little bit here. But I, I want to just share something with you. There's no doubt that God is doing some extraordinary things in our midst. Amen. We, we can all testify that. God's moving. He's changing lives. He's doing all of these things. And, uh, and, and we have seen him do this. Uh, and we know that, that all the things that he has accomplished, he is producing in us thanksgiving and, and this, uh, for his 
faithfulness in providing. You know, one of the things that I've been so excited about telling you about this morning, I've known for months that I was going to share this with you, but, and I, I could hardly wait. In fact, a couple of messages already in this series I started to tell you, but I, I knew this was the one to share it with you. But I, I want to just share this, this bit of truth with, us, with you. If you were with us when we launched the vertical campaign at Cross Point Church in the old Winn-Dixie that we may, we may uh, be able to financially fund this building project. We've been in this building about two and a half years, a little more than that. If you were here with us, you knew that, that to get in this building, we had to take out two loans, okay? Or we had to take out a loan. And so what we did with that with that loan is we took that loan and we, we divided it into two. And, and one loan, we set it up as a, as a, as a, a that we amortized over 25 years. So it'd be much like a, much like a mortgage payment to a house. And so we set that up and we set it up based on the payment that we were paying in rent for the old Winn-Dixie building, okay? We knew that that could be something that would be sustainable for however long it took us. And then we took another loan, which was a $2 million loan, and we aggressively set a plan to pay that off in four years. That means that not only were we paying the rent on this building, the mortgage on this building, and all the interest that is associated with that, that we would also pay the interest of a $2 million loan, we would pay all the interest, and then we would commit God willing to a half a million dollars a year going to principal. A pretty weighty, aggressive plan for paying off that two million dollars. Well, we are two and a half years, and Easter Sunday we will celebrate three years. Amen? And God willing, we're gonna pay off that note in three years, not four. God willing. We're going to pay off that note in three years, not four. That means over $700,000 has been generated above and beyond the budget because of your generosity and because of God providing financially for this church. That is worth celebrating. I hope that just after Easter this year, we're going to be able to burn that note and do away with that note. I tell you, God is, is so good, amen? God is so good, and he has this way of, of just meeting the needs that we have. We knew that God was calling us to, to build a church. We had to build a church because the one we were in was falling down, okay? And we were renting it, and it was no longer gonna be available to us, but we built this building, taking a step of faith, and God has been faithful to provide all the way. What a tremendous testimony to God's provision in our life. I am so excited about that, as you can tell, right? Man, you talk about the weight on a man's shoulders and a church's shoulders to carry that. You know, I am thankful for your generosity, but more importantly, like I said, I am thankful uh, that we have a God who is faithful and provides for his people. You know, as I, I, I looked over this last year, there was so much that I thought about that I wanted to just communicate to you that I am thankful for. And I, as I watched the video last week that you saw, we saw our five elders that were ordained last week, and as they, we, we played the video, they started talking about the things that they were, they were thankful for. And I, I tell you, I got so excited because they matched up with what, and we hadn't even had any conversations, but I tell you, one of them mentioned the, the reality that he is thankful for the diversity of our church. And I wanna just concur with that as well. I am so thankful that we are a church of diversity. Can we just praise God for that this morning? And I'm not talking about just crossing over over uh, racial lines, which I'm thankful for that, but I'm also thankful that in many different ways we are a very diverse church, and God will bless that, I promise you. Uh, you know, as, as we heard from them, the, the, the elders, we also began to realize that some of them shared about just being thankful for the vision that God has given us, and I'm thankful for the vision that God has given us because without vision, the people what? They perish. And I am thankful that God is faithful to continue to pour out the vision to reach this city and beyond 
for the gospel, for Christ. God has set us on a mission, missio Dei. It means the mission of God, and we as a church have embraced the mission of God, and the mission of God will always compel us to go forward, amen? And so I am thankful for vision. Yeah, praise God for vision. I thank God that, that, that several of our elders were praying for and thanking God for the depth and the, the idea that we, we don't want to just be a, a mile wide. We want to be a mile deep, amen? We want the children of God to grow spiritually and to mature as faithful followers of Christ that they may become co-laborers for the gospel. Co-laborers for the gospel. So there's, oh man, this is going to be a four-hour sermon. I got to move on. Let me show you what Jordan made me do. I'll just go ahead and show you. Okay, I got 10 minutes, and I'm about, I don't know, a fourth of the way through here. But we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to put it in high gear. I'm going to switch gears as if I haven't already been just going as fast as I can. I'm about out of breath preaching to you this morning. But the question I want to ask this morning, where I kind of want to bring this to this morning is this, and this question I think is so important for us to ask, and it's this. So why is giving thanks to God so important? Why is it so important that you and I should constantly be giving thanks to God always? Why is it that Scripture teaches us that we need to continually be in this place of of giving thanks? Because here's the reality. When circumstances in our lives say that today is a bad day, we don't feel very thankful, do we? When circumstances surrounding our life and and we we look back at the last year and we say, man, a lot of mess has happened in my life that I'm not real thankful for. A lot of times that steals us of the joy and the happiness that we should be experiencing as believers and followers of Christ Jesus. So I want to ask you this morning this very important question. Why is it that giving thanks to God is so important? Here's the first reason I think it's important. Giving thanks keeps our hearts in the right relationship with the giver. We've already testified that God is a God of provision, amen? We've already testified that God finds this incredible way of meeting our needs. And, but if we're not careful, it's easy for us to forget where the blessings come from. If we're not, if we, if we're not careful, we'll soon forget that we have a giver who is giving to us, who is blessing us beyond measure. And if we're not careful, we'll begin to think that the blessings that have been bestowed upon our life are the result of our own work. We must always remember that God is the one. James 1.17 says this, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father. Everything you have Every blessing you have received is not just a result of your hard work. It is because for whatever reason, God has chosen to bless you with that. And we need to understand that. And if God is going to richly bless us, then we need to be richly blessing as well. Amen? That's the point of what Paul's talking about in this passage. But giving thanks to God helps us have the right perspective about every good gift. Two years ago, my dad passed away in June. It would be two years. And it was a very hard time for me. It was something that, I mean, the last thing I wanted to see was my dad pass away from this earth. He was a really dear friend. He was more than just a dad. He was, he was my best friend, and I, I loved him so much, and I loved hanging out with him, and he was, he was such a good man to me. And, but after he passed away, I remember that, uh, that my, my mother, she, she came to me one day, and she said, David, we need to settle the the accounts of the estate. And my dad had already shared a lot of this with me, but one of the blessings that my dad had, had left me was, was with a, 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 an inheritance that he was passing on to me. And it was a, it was a blessing to see this, but what, was, what really made me proud about this inheritance was how hard he worked, how hard he worked to make that happen for me 
and my sister. And so it's one of these things as we look at, I look back and I'm so thankful for what my dad had had accomplished for me. And oftentimes I, I think of just how thankful I am for him and, and the work that he put into making that happen. But I have to also realize that ultimately it was God who blessed him that he could bless me. Every good gift, and this is what James is talking about, every good gift comes from the Father. And we can never forget that the blessings that have been bestowed upon our life are coming from the Father. Here's the second thing, and I gotta really hurry now. But giving thanks reminds us of just how much we do have. Giving thanks reminds us of just how much we do have. You know, have you ever noticed that we as people, we tend to covet what others have? Have you ever noticed that? Now, I'm I'm certain it's not in your life, right? You never look at somebody else and say, man, I wish I had this or I wish I had that. I'm certain that you're much more righteous than that, right? So often in our life, we, we look around and we compare what we have with what everybody else has. And we always want more. We always think the grass is greener on the other side. And here's the reality. It could be. It could be. But why is it that we find ourselves in this place where we covet what others have? We focus on so often in our life what we don't have. But here's what giving thanks does. When we begin to give thanks to God, we focus on what he has given us and not what we don't have. And so as we do this, we begin to realize that as we focus on our blessings rather than our wants, we become ultimately happier. We become thankful. Our hearts are filled with thanksgiving because of what God has given us. In fact, we begin to realize that much joy comes from recognizing the merciful blessings of God in our life. God has blessed you. God has blessed you. Why worry about what's happening in everybody else's life? 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says this, Give thanks in all circumstances, For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks in all circumstances. Did you catch that? Give thanks in all circumstances. The good and what you perceive as the bad. Because what you perceive as the bad might be the good in your life. In all circumstances. But I love this. I don't know if you caught this in this verse. Give thanks in all circumstances for this. Listen to this. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In other words, as a child of God, as a follower of Jesus Christ, you are commanded to give thanks for all that you have and everything, every blessing in your life. Good and bad. And so we see this in this passage. Now finally, I want to just sort of wrap it up with this. The third point is this. Thankfulness redirects our hearts back to Jesus, or giving thanks redirects our hearts back to Jesus. You know, when you begin to give thanks to God, you can't help but go to Jesus. You can't help but go to Jesus. As a child of God, when you begin to offer thanksgiving to God, I guarantee you one of the things that you're going to do right off the bat is thank God that he loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son to what? To save you. And the scriptures tell us that Jesus Christ is the greatest gift that we have ever received. And as children of God, we believe that. Amen? Amen. We believe it. We, We just absolutely believe it. The last thing that Paul says here in this passage is this. Thanks be to God, I love this, for his inexpressible gift. I love this because this simple yet powerful benediction that Paul is is presenting to us is one of the most profound verses in all of Scripture. As you look at this, Paul says, thanks be to God. He says, thank you, God. And then he says this. He says, and this is the reason, because of the inexpressible gift. I love that because Paul says, I don't even know how to put words on this. But what gift is he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. 
He's talking about Jesus. Paul says, I thank God for this, for this. Have you ever been in a place where you just didn't have the right word? You feel like it's in your head, but you just can't, it won't just roll out on your lips. You, you wonder where it is. You want to you wanna, you wanna say it, but it just won't come out. You just, you can't find, you don't even know in the dictionary if there is such a word, right? If you know me, you know that I oftentimes will make up a word if I need a word, right? But Paul says this, I want to tell you about Jesus. I want to tell you about Jesus. He is the, and he just searches for the inexpressible gift. He can't even put words to it. He said, I want to tell you about Jesus because he is so worthy for you to understand that he is here for you and he wants to do incredible things in your life beginning with salvation. And he sent his helper that his helper, the Holy Spirit of God, would dwell within you and that your life would be eternally changed forever. Paul says, I don't have the words for it. I can't even... Ah, just, it's just pure adoration. It's pure thanksgiving for this gift. And this gift is Jesus. I want to go through a few verses. There's only about 38 of them. Hang in there with me. But Galatians 4.4 4 says this. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son. How many of you are thankful for the reality that God sent his son? 1 John 4.9 says in this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Another powerful truth, Romans 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? And then the final one I want to give you here this morning is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. And it says this, listen to these words. Through him then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips that acknowledge his name. One last question for you this morning. As we enter into the Thanksgiving holiday season, what are you most thankful for? What are you most thankful for? So many thousands of things to be thankful for. All gifts from the Lord. But the greatest, most inexpressible gift that was ever given to us. His name is Jesus. That's all I got for you. That's all I got for you is Jesus. My prayer for you in just a moment as we move into that time where it is the last song that we sing before we leave the building is that you would be at a place where you begin to recognize Jesus as the inexpressible gift in your own life. In just a moment, our pastors will be down front. I'll be down here. Linnell's down here. If you want to come and you want us to pray for you, or if you want to come to this altar and you want to just maybe offer a prayer of thanksgiving, go figure. A prayer of thanksgiving for all that God has done in your life. There's just something about getting out of our chairs and removing ourselves from that place that is very comfortable and and getting to a place where we can just spend time with the Lord. Maybe that's what you want to do. Or maybe you just want to lift up your voices in song and adoration and praise. Cross point, I am praying for you this holiday season. That you recognize that the greatest thing that God ever did in our life. Will send us his son. And his name is Jesus.